Hello boys and girls and welcome to term four and uh, a returning of Storytime with Mr. Prince. Today we're going to be looking at the classic story here of Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Now this is an absolute favorite of mine. I, I love Alice in Wonderland but it is a story that was written long ago. So maybe one that you're not fully familiar with in its entirety. You may be familiar with the Disney version or even with uh, Johnny Depp's latest version of Alice in Wonderland. But this is not just uh, a Disney or a uh, childish story. No, in fact, this is a story with great complexity and a lot of interesting nonsense that goes on. So it's a story that uh, is going to be looking at the character of Alice and all of the crazy things that are going on in her mind. So let's open up here, Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Here we have our table of contents with all of our different chapters. So we'll be starting off with down the rabbit hole. But before we start that, let's have a look at this poem over here that uh, talks about, or it's a poem by uh, Lewis Carroll that goes on about how this story came to be. All in the golden afternoon, full leisurely we glide, for both our oars with little skill by our little arms are plied. While little hands make vain pretense our wanderings to guide, ah, cruel three in such an hour, beneath such dreamy weather, to beg a tale of breath too weak to stir the tiniest feather. Yet what can one poor voice avail against three tongues together? In perilous prima flashes forth her edict to begin it. In gentler tones secunda hopes there will be nonsense in it. While tertiary interrupts the tale not more than once a minute, anon to sudden silence one, in fancy they pursue, the dream child moving through a land of wonders wild and new, in friendly chat with bird or beast and half believe it true. And ever as the story drained the wells of fancy dry, and faintly strove the weary one to put the subject by. The rest next time. It is next time, the happy voices cried. Thus grew the tale of Wonderland, thus slowly one by one. Its quaint events were hammered out, and now the tale is done. And home we steer a merry crew beneath the setting sun. Ah, Alice, a child's stories take with a gentle hand. Lay where childhood streams are twined in memory's mystic band like pilgrims with the wreaths of flowers plucked in a far-off land. Well, it is a very complex poem and uh, is, again, written uh, in a very difficult language to understand with uh, tricky words and such. But in its summary, this story, or this poem, is summarizing the story of this girl who, in the afternoon, is just leisurely you know, relaxing, dreaming off and, um, you know, interrupting her sister as she's reading the story. And then the nonsense starts to begin as she starts daydreaming. And this is how Alice's Wonderland is created by all of that imagination and daydreaming that goes on. And of course, she lives through it and she's talking to the different creatures, the plants, the animals, the people, the beasts. And uh, yeah, that's the story of Alice in Wonderland. So let's have a look at our picture here. There's that white rabbit. There's her sister reading to Alice. And let's start our chapter one. Chapter one, down the rabbit hole. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped into the book her sister was reading, but had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversations? So she was considering her own mind, as well as she could for the hot day made her feel very sleepy and stupid, whether the pleasure of making a daisy chain would be worth the trouble of getting up and picking the daisies, when suddenly a white rabbit with pink eyes ran close by her. There was nothing so remarkable in that, nor did Alice think it was so very much out of the way to hear the rabbit say to itself, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be too late. When she thought it over afterwards, it occurred to her that she ought to have wondered at this time, but at the time it all seemed quite natural. But when the rabbit actually took a watch out of its waistcoat 
and looked at it and then hurried on, Alice started to... Sorry, Alice stared, started to her feet for it flashed across her mind that she had never ever seen a rabbit with either a waistcoat pocket or a watch to take out of it. And burning with curiosity, she ran across the field after it and was just in time to see it pop down a large rabbit hole under the hedge. And in another moment, down went Alice after it, never once considering how in the world she was to get out again. The rabbit hole went straight on like a tunnel for some way and then dipped suddenly down, so suddenly that Alice had not a moment to think about stopping herself before she found herself falling down what seemed to be a very deep well. Either the well was very deep, or she fell very slowly, for she had plenty of time as she went down to look at her, about her, and to wonder what was going to happen next. First she tried to look down and make out what she was coming to, but it was too dark to see anything. And then she looked at the sides of the well and noticed that they were filled with cupboards and bookshelves here and there. Now, I just want to go back. I was stuttering before over a word. I just want to show you, for your own writing, that even authors make mistakes. Okay? Here's a word that should say stared, but it says started. I was started to her feet. It should say stared. Okay, there's just an added T in there. Now, maybe it's not the author's fault. Maybe it's the uh, the editor's fault or the uh, the publisher's fault. For is this is a new version. This isn't the original version of Alice in Wonderland. But it's definitely a mistake that all people make. And I just wanted to show you, even in your writing, you know, mistakes occur. So it's important to read over things and edit it. All right, let's go back to our story. Well, let's have a look at our picture first. So there's Alice falling down the well. And as you can see, it's spiraling down and down and down and down. And I think even if you look at the floor there, that may even be a picture. That may be painted. Uh, so when Alice actually lands, it looks like she's continuing to fall, but it's not that big of a fall. Let's, let's find out. Here. Here we go. Okay. So she saw maps and pictures hung upon pegs. And then she looked down, a, uh, sorry, she took down a jar from one of the shelves as she passed. It was labeled orange marmalade. But to her disappointment, it was empty. She did not like to drop the jar for fear of killing somebody underneath. So she managed to put it in one of the cupboards as she fell past it. Well, thought Alice to herself, after such a fall of this, I shall think of tumbling downstairs. How brave they'll all think me at home. Why, I wouldn't say anything about it even if I fell out of the top of a house. Which was very likely true. Must be that Alice is pretty clumsy. Or does silly things. Down, down, down! Would they fall, never come to an end? I wonder how many miles I've fallen by this time, she said aloud. I must be getting somewhere near the centre of the earth. Let me see. That would be 4,000 miles down, I think. For you see, Alice had learnt several things of this sort in her lessons in the schoolroom, and though this was not a very good opportunity for showing off her knowledge, as there was no one else to listen to her, still it was a good practice to say it over. Yes, that's about right, distance. But then I wonder what latitude or longitude I've got to. Alice had no idea what latitude or longitude either, uh, or, but the thought was nice to think of the grand words to say. Well, of course, latitude and longitude is to do with our geography, and it's got to do with positions on a map. So when we're looking at the map of the world, you can look at what countries are in the longitude and latitude to help you find them. And we can learn more about that in geography uh, next year. Uh, presently, she began again. I wonder if I shall fall right through the earth. How funny it all seemed to come out among the people that walk with their hands, he sorry, heads downwards. The antipathies, I think. She was rather glad there was no one listening. By this time, as it didn't seem, sound at all right. But I shall have to ask them what their name of the country is, you know. Please, ma'am, is this New Zealand or Australia? And she tried to curtsy as she spoke. Fancy curtsying as you're falling through the air. Do you think you could manage it? And what about an ignorant little girl? She'll think me. Not at all, never do to ask. Perhaps I shall see if it's written up somewhere. Down, down, down. There was nothing else to do, so Alice thought. Uh, so Alice soon began talking again. 
Denal will miss me very much tonight. I should think Denar was her cat. I hope they'll remember her saucer of milk at tea time. Dinar, my dear, I wish you were down here with me. There are no mice in the air, I'm afraid, but you might catch a bat. And that's very much like a mouse, you know. But do cats eat bats? I wonder. And here Alice began to get rather sleepy and went on saying to herself in a dreamy sort of way, Do cats eat bats? Do cats... I'm going to say eat bats comes next. But let's go back to that point there. She's talking about miles. Now, in Australia, we don't measure in miles. We measure in kilometers. But this isn't an American text. So the author, Lewis Carroll, is an American. And uh, you can tell that this is an American text because they're talking about falling through the center of Earth and landing on the other side in Australia or New Zealand. So obviously the USA or North America is in the Northern Hemisphere and Australia and New Zealand are in the Southern Hemisphere. So they're going to assume that when they land on the other side of the world that uh, New Zealand or Australia matches up with where she is there in America. Okay, let's, let's go on to the next thing. Do cats eat bats? And sometimes, do bats eat cats? For you see, as she couldn't answer either question, it didn't much matter which way she put it. She felt that she was dozing off and had just begun to dream that she was walking hand in hand with dinner and saying to her dream that she, uh, sorry, and saying to her very earnestly, now dinner, tell me the truth. Do you ever eat a bat? When suddenly thump, 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 down she came upon a heap of sticks and dry leaves and the fall was over. Alice was not a bit hurt and she jumped up on her feet in a moment. She looked up and it all went overhead. Before she was another long passage, uh, sorry, before her was another long passage and the white rabbit was still in sight, hurrying down it. So there we can see Alice running after the rabbit down the passage. All right, there was not a moment to be lost anyway. Away went Alice like the wind and was just in time to hear it say as it turned a corner, oh, my ears and whiskers, how late it's getting. She was close behind it when she turned the corner. But the rabbit was no longer to be seen. She found herself in a long, low hall, which was lit by a, by a low of, row of lamps hanging from the roof. There were doors all around the hall, but they all were locked. And when Alice had been all the way down to one side and up the other, trying every door, she walked sadly down the middle, wondering how she was ever going to get out. Suddenly, she came upon a little three-legged table, all made of solid glass. There was nothing on it but a tiny golden key, and Alice's first idea was that this might belong to one of the doors on the hall. But alas, either the locks were too large or the key was too small. But at any rate, it would not open any of them. However, on the second time round, she came upon a low curtain she had not noticed before. And behind it was a little door about 15 inches high. She tried the little golden key in the lock, and to her great delight, it fitted. Once... Uh, Alice opened the door and found that it led into a small passage not much larger than a rat hole. She knelt down and looked along the passage into the loveliest garden you ever saw. Now let's go back there. 15 inches. An inch is about two and a half centimeters. So 15 inches, we're looking at about uh, something like 37 centimeters. Okay. So this, um, this door is only 37 centimeters tall. So not very large at all. All right, well, you can see. Uh, so she knelt down, looked along the passage, and it was the loveliest garden you ever saw. How she longed to get out of the dark hole and wondered about those beds of bright flowers and those cool fountains. But she could not even get her head through the doorway. And even if my head would go through, thought poor Alice, it would be of very little use without my shoulders. Oh, I wish I could shut up like a telescope. I think I could, if only I knew how to begin. For you see, many... So many out of the way things have happened lately that Alice had began to think that the very things indeed were really impossible. They seemed to be no use in waiting by the little door, so she went back to the table, half hoping she might find another key on it, or at any rate a book of rules for shutting people up like telescopes. This time she found a little bottle on it, which certainly was not there before, said Alice, and tied it 
Around the neck of the bottle was a paper label with the words, Drink Me, beautifully printed on it in large letters. And there is Alice with the bottle that says, Drink Me. It was all very well to say, Drink Me, but the wise little Alice was not going to do that in a hurry. No, I'll look first, she thought, and see whether it's marked poison or not. And which is very good, because we're going to be learning about drug education uh, this term in PDHP and certainly medicines are drugs and can be poisonous if you don't take the correct dose or don't take them at the correct time. So please don't go and drink things that you don't know what they are. Okay. For she had read several nice little stories about children who got burnt and eaten up by wild beasts and other unpleasant things, all because they would not remember the simple rules their friends had taught them, such as that a red hot poker will burn you if you hold it too long, and that if you cut your finger very deeply with a knife, it usually bleeds. And she had never forgotten that if you drink much from a bottle marked poison, it is almost certain to disagree with you sooner or later. However, this bottle was not marked poison, so I was ventured to taste it and finding it very nice, it had, in fact, a sort of mixed flavour of cherry tart, custard, pineapple, roast turkey, coffee, and hot buttered toast. She soon, very soon, finished it off. What a curious feeling, said Alice. If I must be shutting up like a telescope. And so it was indeed. She was now only ten inches high. And her face brightened up at the thought she might was now the right size for going through the little door in that lovely garden. First, however, she waited for a few minutes to see if she was going to shrink any further. She felt a little nervous about this, for it might end, you know, said Alice to herself, in me going out altogether, like a candle. I wonder if that would should be like then. And she tried to fancy what the flame of a candle would look like after the candle is blown out, for she could not remember ever having seen such a thing. After a while, finding that nothing more happened, she decided on going into the garden at once. But alas, her, for poor Alice, when she got to the door, she found that she had forgotten the little golden key. And when she went back to the table for it, she found that she could not possibly reach it. For, see, she could see it quite plainly through the glass, and she tried her best to climb up one of the legs of the table, but it was too slippery. And when she tried herself so, and when she tired herself out with trying, the poor little thing sat down and cried. Come, there's no use in crying like that, said Alice to herself rather sharply. I advise you to leave off this minute. She generally gave herself very good advice, though she very seldom followed it. That means she often talked to herself and gave herself good advice, but she didn't really follow it very much. She still made bad choices. And sometimes she scolded herself for severe, so severely as to bring tears into her eyes. And once she remembered trying to box her own ears for having cheated herself in a game of croquet. She was playing against herself, for this curious child was very fond of pretending to be two people. But it's no use now, thought poor Alice, to pretend to be two people. While there's hardly enough of me left to make one respectable person. So Alice, I'm going to assume, is a child who doesn't really play with her older sister, must be playing by herself and gets caught up in her fantasy world and she verses herself in a lot of things, you know, imaginative play, which is good. It's always good to play with yourself, going outside, you know, and pretending. The imagination is a powerful thing. But uh, where it says there she uh, severely scolded herself, that means she got angry with herself, she was yelling at herself and boxing her own ears having cheated herself in a game of croquet. I think that's what she's trying to do is like she's putting her, her hands over her ears and, and you know, refusing to listen because uh, clearly she's playing two different people and, and one's, you know, maybe teasing her or cheating or whatever and she doesn't want to listen to it. Sooner I fell off, sorry, fell on a little glass box that was lying under the table. She opened it and found it in a very small cake of which the words eat me were beautifully marked in currants. Currants are like a, a sultana. Well, I'll eat it, said Alice. And if it makes me grow larger, I shall reach the key. And if it makes me grow small, I shall creep under the door. So either way, I'll make it into the garden. And I don't care which happens. She ate a little bit and she had anxiously said to herself, which way, which way? Holding her hand up the top of her head to feel which way it would grow. 
and she was quite surprised to find that she remained the same size. To be sure, this is what generally happens when one eats cake. But Alice had gotten so much into the way of expecting nothing but out of the way things to happen that it seemed quite dull and stupid for her life to go in a common way. So she set to work and very soon finished off the cake. Well, she was hoping it would grow. And of course, Alice is getting used to crazy things happening, so perhaps it might have happened. Anyway, we're about to get into chapter two, The Pool of Tears. But that will be our next reading as we've already reached 20 minutes. All right, well, I look forward to reading chapter two with you now. Bye.